Alright, I'm not sure if I'm going to put this video up or not. Um, not firing on all eight cylinders today, guys, so uh, I don't know. I'll see what I do when I start talking. <laughs> I was going to touch a little bit on um, steroids in the brain again. Um, it's an ongoing researching that I'm doing, <coughs> and I'll keep dropping bits in as, as I come up with stuff. Um, it is mind-blowingly complex um, what I am discovering is that steroids have an impact in a whole lot of levels um, a recent study I was reading was showing that about 50% of all steroid users or ex-steroid users report changes in and I'm talking long-term permanent changes in anxiety, mood, and depressive state. And for the vast majority, for the negative. Um, neurosteroids, steroids that are created within the brain, uh, seem to have been massively impacted by exogenous injections, as does progesterone, prolactin, and the other hormones. Um, and there's a lot of research with the relationship between progesterone and prolactin and GABA receptors uh, and other neurochemicals of that nature. Um, so, I mean, it would appear that these drugs have a very large impact on our brain chemistry. What we don't know is how long term that is um, but I am coming across more and more people that have issues shall we say now where it gets difficult is do these people have issues in the first place which has made them turn why they turn to the drugs or are the drugs causing the issues or are the drugs just in exaggerating amplifying the issues uh, one of the problem is that when you start talking to people about this subject they're very very reluctant to admit that they may have an issue but just by conversating with people and their approach and their perception of what's going on within themselves you can sort of start to see that look um, things aren't quite firing right you have a twisted perception on who you are what you are or, or how your life is functioning from a, a psychological point of view uh, it's also become very apparent that these uh, <clears throat> drugs have an impact on our offspring um, 65 70 percent of babies conceived while the male is on cycle will be female so there is a definite impact on XY chromosomes um, and it would appear that these individuals or the children born of steroid users um, or male steroid users should I say tend to be more outspoken tend to be more open um, more hands-on, more risk-taking. Now, this can be as much a negative as a positive thing. Where it gets a little bit difficult is that behaviour and the whole thing about is it genetics or is it environment starts to come into play because if as an individual and a parent I am a steroid user, then I would be deemed as a higher risk-taker than somebody who was not a steroid user. So... Is it my environment that influences my child? Or is the chemical manipulation of my DNA expression that's influenced my child? The strange thing is that you would suspect that a higher testosterone level would result in a male. But it doesn't, it results in a female. Uh, and in a child or in an individual, um, higher testosterone levels will tend to display certain behavioral characteristics physical hands-on that sort of thing less academic less good with languages and yet what seems to happen with the dna expression from male parent cross to a female child 
is the exact opposite. That a high testosterone level in a male parent, the DNA expression and the alter the alter the temporary alterations to the DNA that are transferred across to the female child actually go almost to the opposite. So even though they are more expressive, the more outspoken, the more outgoing, they're also very good with languages. Uh, and the academic side, it seems to be to some degree a bonus. Having said that though, a child that is a risk taker can be the next multimillionaire entrepreneur and can also be the next drug death statistic. So it is very much a case of these drugs don't make the choices for these individuals. Um, they just set a blueprint of how these individuals may approach certain problems. And that can be both positive and negative. You know, if you're not a risk taker, you're never getting any bother. But also, if you're not a risk taker, you never take any chances or achieve greatness, you could argue. So, um, there's definitely impact without doubt uh, whether that is universally negative or positive I doubt it's probably either uh, and will probably just be a case of uh, an environmental issue then regarding how that person develops and their life choices they make but it will make that person more prone to taking chances being outgoing being outspoken, trying, um, and in the case of a female, more likely to excel at languages. Now, regards users' mental impact, I'll be honest with you, I am struggling a little bit with this. It is massive. What I find strange um, and what I find quite um, conflictory is that because of the way the medical world tests for aggression, the vast majority of studies, bear in mind though that these are only being done on really TRT or very mild doses, have stated that steroids don't cause aggression. However, steroids do affect white matter count within the brain, and white matter count has an impact on impulsivity, impulsivity sorry. so our reactions, how quickly we react to things. Now, if I'm with an individual and I've known that individual for a period of time and I suddenly find that they're reacting more quickly to stimulus, be it negative or positive, in a negative case I would say, well, that person's getting angry quicker, they're losing their temper quicker, they're a more aggressive person. Now, from a point of view of medically, this person's aggression levels haven't increased, so they're not actually an angrier person, it's just their reactions to stimulus have increased the more reactionary so I can see how in the real world and I'm sure we could all agree that that would be deemed as being a more aggressive person so science can sit there and say that steroids don't make people more aggressive I think we all know the truth of that is that actually on how we are perceived they probably do and what people perceive as aggression may not be in scientific terms aggression but in the real world, it's what it's going to be interpreted as. Um, their impact on mood seems to be far-reaching, um, both positive and negative. Um, and, and a lot seems to be down to how well you keep your hormones in balance. Um, the effect on neurochemistry and the, the massive impact it has on the large amount of neuro brain stimulants that we have I'm still delving into um, and it's proving to be challenging um, I'm having to learn about a lot of areas that I didn't have a clue about which is why it's taking me so long to get any progress with it but what we can safely say is that our usage does definitely impact on our personality it definitely impacts on our behavior our, our mood um, our serotonin levels um, GABA all those different brain chemicals that affect the way we are as human beings 
progesterone seems to have a very strong link with a lot of these um, as does estrogen and it's quite strange in that estrogen in a female will make them more aggressive while estrogen in a male tends to make them more placid and emotional excuse me um, one of the reasons why women suffer from PMT is because of the massive spike in estrogen Obviously, progesterone can generally counter estrogen, though I have seen high progesterone and, and high estrogen, and I've seen low progesterone and low estrogen, so not necessarily a correlation, but in general, if progesterone is high, estrogen will be low and vice versa. Many will argue that protecting can't get high unless estrogen is high, which is bollocks. Um, I had some studies come back last week, so as I say, some tests come back last week on somebody, and... Uh, progesterone was normal 1.4, 1.6, somewhere around there. Estrogen was at 66, which is decent. And uh, prolactin was 470 or 90 odd. Very high. Um, so our bodies do strange things. But um, there are definitely strong, strong links between steroids and mood and depression and anxiety. And we are starting to see the early indicators of long-term use having a long-term effect on someone's mental state um the obvious one that jumps out as being the big no-no for for mood changes is trend i think this is double fold i think is one is because it's such a high andro androgenic ratio and i think it also has such a strong binding affinity uh which enables it to really get stuck into the brain so to speak um but um it would seem that the higher the androgen the more impact it will have on your mental state um so if you are concerned or you do feel you have issues then your uses need to look more low androgen high anabolics uh, and less stuff like trend halo basically less the strength drugs um but like i said i am continuing to learn and i will continue to update you as i discover and find out new things um it is complex and unfortunately as a result of that it is slow going right i'm going to get off and get these videos uploaded okay um thank you very much for your time and i'll catch up with you guys